welcome back to another Black City Coffee Vlog. I am copying again, doing a little quality control here, checking out this, checking out that, but on the table, we've got Nahuli Gallery. Uh, they sent me some green, some two samples right here from Dia de Muertos. They're celebrating Day of the Dead. We'll be showcasing an exciting expedition of Katrinas and Katrines from the original creators of the Alibris, La Familia Linares Nahuli Gallery will be rendering a tribute to traditional altar to a variety of multimedia artists such as Diego Rivera, Frida Kahlo, Rufina Tamayo, Francisco Toledo, and more. Check it out. Links in the description. Thank you, Nahuli Gallery. And I want to mention Osco Trading for sending me these samples. It's got a honey sample here or a honey processed one here and a wash process here. Now, I did this blind the other day um, and I got some really surprising results. Um, something happened with the recording. So <laughs> I thought, well, I'm doing some, you know, quality control stuff over here. So let's just cup it again. Plus, since if you heard me right, we had a honey processed coffee here. So I cupped that at 24 hours. I wanted to see what it tasted like. <clears throat> now waiting well over 24 hours. Um, now we're gonna see if there's any change in the cup. I have some naturals out here. Uh, but yeah, thank you again for sending me coffees. These guys can always send me green. Hit me up in the DMs and I'll let you know where to send it. So when I was doing my first initial run through of smells on the dry, I got like, it's kind of gone now, but like it was like almond roca, um, almond liqueur, which is always a nice smell. I don't particularly like to taste it, but uh, I like the smell for sure. There's this almond liqueur thing to it. These were roasted on the Akawa. These production roasts that I'm checking for quality control and stuff like that were roasted on my Mill City 1kg. Um, I have here uh, our Chakul Cat right here from the Akawa, and I wanna compare that roast profile to my, where is it? a cool cat here it's good they're right next to each other production roast and uh i always do this anyway but i want to check again there was something that i changed um, in the roasting of this production i thought about a higher charge temp for sure just because it's washed i was like thinking about it i was like you know what i'm not i don't know let me try something sometimes you'll get on a path and uh, you think it's fine you'll you kind of get like locked into your ways and then all of a sudden you'll learn something you'll be like uh oh wait a second let me let me make sure i've been doing this the right way or coming at it uh, from the right mentality and <clears throat> since i've had so many naturals i've developed a sort of gentle approach to roasting not gentle really i i think i have an aggressive style of roasting i've been limiting myself because of the power of my roaster and trying to be really mindful of how naturals take on a lot of heat really easily so i have to like control but bringing back wash coffees our chakul cat for example is a wash processed coffee bringing that back into the mix i have i picked up um another guatemalan from the la pia farm which is like outstanding it was too expensive to buy in bulk for me so i got just like five pounds for myself because i really loved it on the hasea's table that day <clears throat> so i have that on the table and then we have a production roast of panther creek that i also want to try because i it roasted fine in the numbers and in the curve and i'm like but what what is that doing in the cup you know gotta always confirm confirm in the cup okay validate in the cup so let's get this started all right i got some water running this is my max table i had other coffees to cup like um collaborative origins but i won't have enough water to do it correctly another thing to mention and document is that i don't have my normal sea water purified water with minerals put back in so that's annoying we're getting a new water system hopefully this week but something definitely to remember as I cup these. Cause I did get some unsavory or unwanted things in the cup the other day. And I was wondering if that was a result of not having my typical water, you know? I wonder if that's 
anything. That's definitely something to investigate. <clears throat> While I don't have water, I haven't been able to use my humidifier because we don't have water. <laughs> so my allergies are like intense, boy. With two minutes left on the clock, let's talk about these two coffees that are new. Okay, I tasted them yesterday, like I said, blind. And I was like, this one was very interesting. Pacamora varietal. Uh, we'll have to look that up. Generally, these are sitting at a lower elevation that these are sitting at. Boliv and they're from Bolivia. And Bolivia is kind of like right next to Brazil. And if you know Brazils, they kind of sit flatter. They have a lot of coffee. They have a lot of, um, I think, they, I think they focus on more like resistant, um, disease resistant crops, crops that yield a lot in general. And so I was kind of thinking like where it sits in relation to um, where Brazil is at. And I'm seeing like kind of similar numbers. It's a little bit higher than Brazil. So I was like, hmm, am I going to get a lot of like sweet stuff? But to my surprise, when I was tasting in the cup, it wasn't all about sweet and uh, Brazil tasting coffee. So I was like, oh, cool you know, and um, the farm is called Il Ilimani. This is a wash processed Pacamara at 1500 degree, uh, 1500 meters. And then this is from Tahimo. It's a honey processed coffee from the region of Taipiala. And it's a Katsura Castillo varietal and at 1550 meters. Very cool. I'm gonna really try not to look at the, their cupping notes on the back. Again, we have some handicaps, like not having our SEA water. We're just using bottled water today. Um, you know, just some sort of those things. And uh, these were roasted today and I ground them and I try to wait like 30 minutes at least, but I don't think that was the case. So we're gonna maybe get some like unsavory, unwanted stuff. We're gonna try to taste through that if you're in a hurry and you're trying to do like little shortcuts like I am. Um, I kind of have a tight scheduled pack day today, but this is the only time I could cup. So um, I'm gonna try to taste through these unwanted things and kind of just note them to the side that there's nothing wrong with the coffee. It's just that maybe, you know, we're not getting, uh, we're not using the same water, da, da, da. Okay. So let's go ahead and break the crust. Okay. So right away I get this like baggy smell. Not the best. <laughs> if you would have let these coffees rest, you'd probably smell more of the varietal and things like that. bad. Okay, cool. That was just a weird one. And that makes sense because this is Panther Creek and this is a natural process coffee. You need to let them rest for like two days and I'm really rushing this. So I'm really going to have to taste through not defects, but just through like off gassing smells and stuff. I don't know if that's possible though. So I usually don't do this. So it's, it's a fun experiment. And um, the reason why I'm doing quality control and I'm doing it sort of in a rushed state is because I, I, I'm roasting at a higher charge temp <clears throat> and I'm elongating the middle a little bit, quite a bit more significantly more. And so I want to just check if that's okay, you know, or if it's better, obviously. <clears throat> I think it generally like um, people won't be able to tell. That's my assumption right now, but we will see if that's true. I feel pretty confident, but if I like totally, you know, fuck it up or it's like totally weird, I'll have to roast it again and then I'll, I'll drink this for myself. And that's basically how I handle like big mistakes or significant mistakes. I'm just like, I did something different. Let me check it. 
I want, I want to, um, obviously I have a goal or whatever. I want to make this sweeter for this person or whatever it is. And so I'll be like, okay, let me change my roasting profile or whatever. Or something during roasting will just happen. And then like, now I have to see if that mistake is still passable. And then, uh, so yeah, I'll check it. And then if it doesn't work out, I can always roast it again. And it's a hard lesson for me because I don't like wasting coffee, obviously. But it never goes to waste. I just, I drink it, but that means I'm not putting money back into this quote unquote little side hustle to make sure that I can keep having this up as a hobby and not feel like I'm pulling out of pocket. You know what I mean? Um, Cause basically I just make enough money to have it run, but I don't really make profit, if that makes sense. It's almost um, balancing it out, which I've gone into a lot into like, if you really want to have, you know, run a business in coffee, you've got to scale it a lot. <laughs> it's, it's not going to be like this, you know, if you want to like live off coffee, it's not going to be like how I do it here. And this is very fun. This is the fun part. This is all the fun part. <laughs> and I get a smidge a skid mark of what it's like to sell coffee. All right. Um, I think I'll just wipe in between instead of like dipping. I feel like that's better because I don't have enough water for another rinse cup. All right, generally, are all light roast. The color looks really good. This looks maybe lighter than some. It could be the lighting. We're in here four minutes. Usually it takes me four minutes to pass. So again, we're gonna let these guys cool. Again, we're gonna iterate that these are production roasts and they're freaking hot off the press. So they haven't had time to rest. So I will need to be able to taste through not having to rest. <laughs> what do we call that in coffee world? No rest, no rest coffees. Uh, where these have had plenty of good rest and should be tasting quite nice. Versus these, I may get some un unwanted stuff in the cup, uh, but I'll try to ignore that. Because I'm not really judging to buy, I'm judging to check. Or I'm, I'm not judging to check. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm judging to check. <laughs> okay, we're at six minutes. Let's take a whirl. Wow, okay. So yeah, <laughs> right away, like I said, I never, I don't do this. I don't cup right away. But I was like, well, what does it taste like again? Remind me. Um, basically these just feel, I just taste very harsh and are kind of short. Um, they have short finishes. They're abrasive, a little like, whoa, you know what I mean? And these are more well-rounded out. They are um, sweeter, they have depth. Um, they're really pleasing to taste, you know? So just in terms of like why you should let coffee rest before you cut them. <laughs> but I, I just was curious. I was like, I still have a lot, right? So I'm, a, I'm gonna cup tomorrow again and check. Um, but yeah, so these are kind of a wash, I'd say, but I wanted to see, it's a fun experiment. <laughs> And there's this cardboardy baggy flavor that it needs to go away so that I could really taste what the coffee is presenting. This is a natural process coffee. I'm gonna wait a solid 48 hours. These are both washed. I can maybe get in there tomorrow because they're already, they're okay. But there is, um, there's like floral, there is, um, yellow fruit and berries and that sort of nice thing. 
and there's a creaminess to it already. So yeah, I could probably get in here tomorrow and I think it's gonna be even more rich for me in, in terms of the flavors. And this is that Lapilla, that the one for myself, which is really good. This is tasting okay. It's, um, I think, cause I have, I have the cow here that's been resting for two days. Mm -hmm. This is creamier, more pleasing, would please more people. And if I'm checking in production quality standards or whatever, what's gonna be the most pleasing for my customer. Um, definitely, I think whatever I'm doing here, I think is good, but there is a little bit of a harshness on the finish that I think needs to kind of mellow out and I'll, I'll check it again tomorrow for sure. Because if it tastes like this, which is creamy and soft almost, um, still berries, great acidity, but it's not, it's not sharp like that. Yeah. I think that's the main difference. It's there, but it's sharp. It's got a sharp middle finish, finishing on the palate there. It's sharp. And I try this again. Yeah. This sort of like, mm, the finish is warm and long and sweet, uh, creamy. So that's the big difference. Cool. So I'm documenting that in my brain. Like, um, this is at a lot of time to rest and I'm trying to imagine what my customers tasting when they get it finally, like drinking it in their cup, you know, cause they're not going to get it like this ever. <laughs> I mean, for one thing, it's got to ship to you. Right. So I want to see and make sure like what they're tasting in the cup has like really nice round and sweet, or is it still weird and funky? Like that would be something to pay attention to. So this, Ilmani washed Pac Mara 1500 um, meters. I always want to say degrees. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. I remember being very puzzled by this because the flavor of like almost a floral soy sauce like a nice floral soy sauce. Um, if you've ever had like, <sighs> there's like this floral vinegar that I use in the cupboard. I cook with it all the time and that's the vibes I'm getting from here. So it's, it's definitely not in the bad way, but I just never, um, I've never tasted that before in the cup. And I think this might be my first Bolivian coffee, which is cool. Cheers. <laughs> Acidity is high. A really high city, high noted coffee. But there is a soy sauce, savory, meaty element to it. I wonder too, like, you know, I roasted this on the Akawa and I just picked the, a general wash profile. Maybe, maybe this profile is getting it a little too roasty for what it needs. I don't know. I'd have, I'd have to do tests and I'm not that skilled to just get it in one shot. Cause they sent me hundred grams and I wish my cow can do proper, like 50 grams, 50 grams like that. That would have been good, but it, it, over, it tends to over roast. It tends to tip the coffee, um, for whatever reason, you know, it's too hot or I don't know. Hmm. This honey one's really good though. Wow. I definitely taste that uh, secondary flavor that's coming from the processing, which is the honey. So honey, meaning they like, they let the cherry stay on there and get all sticky and weird. It's not, there's no honey actually used, but it gets all sticky and weird and stuff. And they let it ferment. And I definitely taste that ferment and ferment is, <laughs> well, well, some cuppers who are actually professionals when they're like, oh, I could just taste ferment like Jared, uh, he's like, nah, it's not, you know, it's not hitting it for me. It's not going to score high because, um, but I get, you know, I get ferment, I get creamy. I get some definitely like the milk chocolate stuff that comes from the roast itself. I get like pink fruit. Red fruit. 
Mm. I really like it. Like to me, I love ferment flavor, wine flavor, Pinot Noir, not Cabernet, not jam. It's not jammy, it's light. It's elevated, it's juicy. Um, not jammy at all. Um, but yeah, a soy sauce thing in here, in the Pacamara. It's savory, it's like, it's meaty almost. It's like, like this is a sorbet, 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 sherbet. <laughs> this is like a, a, a main course <laughs> in terms of how heavy it is and like how syrupy it is. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, could be my roast, but <laughs> like what they got was caramel cream, yeah, for sure. Floral cardamom. I've never had cardamom. I think you find cardamom in like Indian cooking. I'm not a big Indian food person. So maybe that's, <laughs> maybe that's what I'm tasting, cardamom. Floral, I don't know floral. I don't get the floral. This one is super tasty. Lime, plum, sugarcane, grapefruit, raisin. Okay, sweeter, sweeter fruits, bitter fruits. <laughs> yeah, I'd say pink grapefruit, not yellow. <laughs> sugarcane. I've never had real sugarcane before. <laughs> yeah, raisin for sure. Yeah. Plum. Okay, that makes sense, right? Because when we were looking at Katura uh, varietal, what does the varietal taste like? It's definitely tasting like that. I didn't. I don't remember what Castillo tasted like, but I think it was really similar. Um, really tasty coffee. I like this honey one a lot. I think I. I think I'd take that one. You know, <laughs> this pack of Mar is something different. Yeah, it's different. It, it's tasting just like a particular Asian spice, which is really interesting. But anyway, cool. Cheers to my first like Bolivian coffees, I think. I'm pretty sure. My first Bolivian coffees, wow. In the cup. That's fun, that's exciting. I didn't really realize that yesterday. <laughs> All right. Let's see what's up with these guys again. <laughs> They've had 16 minutes to cool. It tastes like it's baggy, man. It's got a, it's got a rest. <sniffs> Creamy, but kind of one note. It's a cool cat. Uh, <sniffs> wait, what? <sniffs> <sniffs> All right, it's getting sweeter as it's cooling. This is my well-rested cool cap on the Akawa. High finishing temp. Um, high charge and finishing temp on this production roast. It's, um, it's there, but it needs to rest. They need a rest. That's all there is to it. I just wanted to check and see. A little fun experiment. But yeah, it's October. Dia de Muertos. Check it out. Link's in the description. Thanks for hanging out in this fun cupping session once again. Always be cupping. It's good for you. All right, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.